painting it in. God bless you, sir. Michi, Michi. Yes. Jackie's on the way back from Nigeria. What the Jackie's in? We are in Nigeria. She's in Istanbul. Making her way back home. Good morning, yes, Superman. <laughs> hey, Crystal, I was just thinking about you, Crystal. She can move that mouse. Type that up, guys. He can move the mouse. Oh, hey. First Lady Judy. The right place at the right time. He can because move your mouth. Giant slave Jesus. He's a mountain moving, giant slave in Jesus. Good morning, Pamela. Let's talk to him. He's a mountain moving, giant slave in Jesus. I feel like bragging on my savior. Come on. He's a mountain moving, giant slave in Jesus. He's who he is. He's a mountain Hey Angela, what's up, Ram? Ah, uh, you wanna know, don't you, huh, Phyllis? That is uh Todd Galbraith. I don't know who sings the song. This is him doing the praise and worship. Oh, it's it's uh Mighty to Save. It's by Hillsong. But this is Todd Galbraith doing it at his church. You guys pray for uh, church is called Redemption Ministries. Uh, they're in Greenville, South Carolina, and they're moving. Uh, they're shifting pastors next month in May. Yeah. Oh, this month they're shifting pastors. I think not, maybe not this Sunday, but the following Sunday they're shifting pastors from um, Ron Carpenter to John Gray. Most of you have heard of John Gray. Uh, he's moving to Greenville, South Carolina, and he's becoming the pastor of a church in Greenville called Redemption. And he's changing the name, I think, to Relentless. I think it's, the church is going to be called Relentless Church. It's moving from... Um, um, it's going to be moving from Redemption to Relentless. And, and Todd Galbraith is their um, Minister of Music. So Savior, he can move the mountains. My God. Hey, Shernilla, good morning. You love John Gray? Yes, John Gray will be in Greenville, South Carolina. Hey, dig it, Eric. So let's pray for him and his wife as they take over the pastorship down in Greenville. So he's leaving. Um, uh, I'm not even sure what Joe, what Noel, uh, Joel Osteen's church is called um, in Texas. So he's moving from Texas to Greenville, South Carolina. So let's pray for him and his wife. Um, amen. Good morning, everybody. Blessings to you. Uh, it is Tuesday, and oh, I want to let you know that I will be in I will be in Prince Frederick, Maryland, in Calvert County on this coming Saturday. Um, there is a 15th, 15th annual community prayer walk, Saturday, May 5th. Uh, it begins at 10 o'clock at the Prince Frederick Shopping Center, and I think it's a um, uh, walking and praying as one body. In Prince Frederick, Maryland, um, so it's a it's a bunch of uh, believers coming together to pray for here are the, their issues. Uh, I think they're praying for communities, schools, families, nations, and more. So, so I'm one of the participants of this prayer walk. I'll be praying. I, um, I believe I'm praying for families, and um, so please, if you're in the area, come by come by on this coming Saturday and lend your voices to the prayer. Um, I'll be there at, at 10 o'clock, and uh, we'll be praying. And then I think at 5 o'clock that evening, couples, if you if you love to learn, would like to learn hand dancing, um, at our church, we're going to be doing a hand dancing class. I think it's $20 a couple, and you're going to be learning lessons on hand dancing. Uh, so let's, 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 so join me. Oh, oh, if you haven't, um, I'm doing a series, a two-week series at least, 
on um, bringing back the super me. I started it last Sunday. Bringing, someone asked me on Facebook, what was that? What was the whole idea of the Superman on my Facebook post? Um, I just simply believe that we as believers are, are, are kind of crawling into a, a cave and being kicked by the enemy because you don't know who you are. And so the, the closest comparison that I have to anyone that you should compare yourself to is the idea of Superman and, and that he is um, able to um, do wonderful exploit. Uh, nothing stops Superman but kryptonite. And so if, in fact, you as a believer are not winning battles in your life, if you're not winning um, faith battles, if you're not winning uh, financial battles, if you're not winning health battles, if you're not winning um, relationship battles, if there's if there seems to be a continued loss uh, and lack in your life, it must mean that there's kryptonite in your in your life somewhere. You must be too close to kryptonite because by your identity, you should not be losing. You should not be losing. You should not be depressed. You should not be feeling lonely. You should not be having a drink and 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 smoke and um, and pop pills or rely on any foreign substance to get you up and 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 moving throughout the day. The spirit of the living God that is lying in you should be doing the work. And if you are, if you find yourself as a believer and you're not living a victorious life consistently, I'm not talking about every now and then something happens. And you have a good day. No, I'm talking about if you're not living a consistent, whole and complete life as a believer, you must need you have to then um, pause long enough to check to see if, in fact, there is something in your life that is not like God, that is drawing your attention or drawing your attention away from God and and disintegrating the power that is within you, all right? And so that was the whole idea of, of Superman. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about kryptonite on, uh, on Sunday. What, is, what, is, what, what are the types of things, fear and, and loneliness and lack and all of that stuff, what is in our lives that, that's causing uh, us to not live the victorious life? All right, so, so join me this coming Sunday. Um, we'll be at Bible study tonight. We're talking about faith and Bible study. How, what is faith? How do you increase your faith? How do you get your faith to the next level? We're talking about that at Bible study. So join us tonight at 730 uh, for Bible study. Uh, I am talking about for the next couple of days um, on Wake Up With The Word, this idea of faithfulness. What is faithfulness? Second Chronicles chapter number 16, verse number nine is our text for this morning. Second Chronicles chapter number 16, verse number nine. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Did you get that? That here's what, here's what you need to understand for your own particular personal life. That the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to, check this out, here's what he's coming for. To strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed toward him. Since I was a boy, I've always heard that God honors faithfulness. In fact, men and women in my, throughout my life were respected, revered, and celebrated because of their ability to, quote unquote, be faithful. If you notice that, if you, if you go to uh, churches in my, life, in my culture, I was, I was church, so, so I would hear all the time that people would be celebrated. And then the first thing they would say is that this brother or this sister is faithful. They, you can trust who they are. You can trust consistently. And they were all sometimes praised because of their faithfulness. But what does being faithful mean? And why don't we seem to honor this characteristic anymore? Why don't we, in the 21st century, in 2018, why aren't we lauding people? Why aren't we respecting, looking up to, revering people who are faithful? In the dictionary, um, to be faithful means to be reliable, to be steadfast, to be unwavering. The Bible speaks of this type of faithfulness in four ways. Number one, faithfulness is an attribute of God. As a positive, it, number two, it is a positive characteristics that the Bible says so few have. 
Number three, as a characteristic that too many of us lack. Lastly, and as a gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit. To be full of faith is what how you turn faithfulness around. To be full of faith means that your belief system is full, complete. James says, lacking nothing. You have to be fully persuaded to be faithful. You have to be set in your in your path. You cannot you cannot be shifting in your allegiances and call yourself faithful. You cannot be uh, wavering one day just because a circumstance seems to be coming at you and and claim to be faithful. Um, but the here is what you need to understand, brothers and sisters, is that God is searching to be connected to, this is what one version of that scripture says, that God is searching to stay close to someone who is faithful. Uh, that that it, as in the case of the Christians in Ephesus and Colossia, our text in Second Chronicles implies that God is physically, check this out, visibly and actively taking an initiative to look for, oh, bless the Lord. He is looking for faithful people. Why? Why is God looking for faithful people? Because he blesses those who are faithful. He, he stays connected to, he is a fixed to someone who is fully persuaded in his ability to bring you out of every storm. If you, uh, he, it, God, I, I love this because that means that if I'm worried about where God is, if I if I seem to be during my life, if you if you seem to be losing grip on your connection with God, the first thing you need to check out to discover is where is my faith? Where where has my faith gone? If I don't see God or if I don't sense God's spirit around me in this situation, the likelihood is that not, that not God has changed, but somehow my faith my my faith has has changed or my focus that's a better word my focus has turned away from god or or at least my focus has been uh watered down to start to look at as a peter did you start looking at the conditions and you're wondering where god is when you begin to sink oh that was good uh yes got faith that's a good t-shirt to get got faith our text implies that God blesses faithfulness. It says that the eyes of the Lord searches the whole earth in order to strengthen those who, whose hearts are fully committed to him. Did you hear that? A lot of us wonder where God is when we seem to need him most. That, that, and that's somehow what you, do, you and I do. We start to wonder, where is God when I'm going through this storm? Where is God when I'm going through this heartache? Where is God when I'm going through uh, this trial? My brothers and sisters, God is where faithfulness resides. And wherever people are faithful, the Bible says God is coming there. That, that God is right there. Oh, I heard that. Somebody, somebody needed to hear that. That God is right where faithfulness is. And if you want to bring God into your circumstances, ask yourself, where is my faith fully persuaded toward? What do I say out of my mouth? What do I, I contemplate in my mind? Um, he will keep me in perfect peace when my mind is stayed on him. What is my thought life like? What is what am I presenting out from my mouth? Where is where is my body being moved toward? Because wherever your mind is, uh, the Bible says that's where your body will all be. Also, that's where you will you will go toward. Your mouth will go towards your thoughts. And your body, your actions will move toward your faith. And wherever your, your faith is, whether it's in your money, if it's in your car, if it's in your job, if it's in your relationship, if it's in whatever it's in, that's where your God is. And God is saying, you're wondering where I am and I'm wondering where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is that this verse says that God searches, indicates that faithful people, number one, is are hard to find. 
The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 20, verse number six, everyone talks about how faithful he is, but just to trust, but just try to find someone who really is. Many of us think we're faithful to God, uh, but few of us really are. A lot of people talk the good talk, but few of us really trust God as much as we should. Too often, brothers and sisters, we trust our bank accounts, our human intellect, our careers, and our relationships. Psalms 53 verse number two says, God looks down from heaven on the entire human race, and he looks for, to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks him. But no, my brothers and sisters, all have turned away, and all have become corrupt. No one does good, not a single one. Here's, here's what you need to understand. Uh, check this, put this in your spiritual bank because you're going to need this. Faithfulness is the key to blessing and victory. That, that your faith, that where your faith is, is consistently and not, not just on Sunday between 11 and 1230 and make sure that we get out at 1230 or you going you, you got to leave. But, but, but check where your worship is. Check where you're worshiping on a consistent basis because God uh, always comes, affixes himself to faithfulness. First John uh, chapter number five, verse four and five says, for every child of God defeats the evil in this world and we achieve this victory. How do you achieve victory? Come on, talk back to me. Through our faith. Our faith is the key to our victory. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number 28, verse number 20, a faithful man, oh, I love this, I love Proverbs. A faithful man will have many blessings. You can't get no simpler than that. That a faithful man will have many blessings. Put that on your, put that on your car. Put that on your Instagram, on your Twitter. That the Proverbs chapter number 28, verse number 20. If you're going through a storm, here's what you need to understand. Do you want God to come in it? He says, a faithful man will have many blessings. I want your life, my brothers and sisters, to have many blessings, don't you? Uh, but to have those blessings, you have to learn how to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You have to stay faithful to the charge and the calling of God on your life. The purpose of God. Why does God have you here? You have to stay committed and to be faithful in that thing. Ah, and should not expect. Okay, so here's, the, here's conversely. The problem that we're having is that we are double-minded. See, see, uh, you think that you are faithful because you say you are you uh, are a Christian, but you may be a Christian who be who are who is double-minded. That your that your your attention is is uh, distracted. That you have spiritual ADHD. You you can be easily moved away from uh, the worship. And the work of the Lord. Uh, uh, check that out. That, that when you get easily distracted and you get pulled upon in all different types of directions, and God's work and His worship becomes secondary or or third on the list of things that you have to do on a given day, you have now become, in God's eyes, hear me now, double-minded. You may sound like you're staying because it's there. I still love God, but but God is saying, no, your attention is moved in another direction. And this is what James says. He says, too many of us are double-minded, uh, inconsistent, or other words, unfaithful. That man, James says, is referred to as, as unstable, is what God calls you. And he should not expect to receive anything from God. Uh, I'll let that sit there. That, that you're wondering why God is not answering your prayer. It is because you are double-minded and unstable, and you should not expect to receive anything from God. I'll leave you with this scripture as an example of faithfulness. It's in your Bible, and it's called the persistent widow. Here's what it says. Then Jesus told the disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up.
Mm -hmm. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, the judge refused. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, she will not stop. She stays consistent. She is here every day. She keeps on coming, even though I never give her signs that I'm going to change. He says, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so she won't eventually come and attack me. Here's what, here's what the revelation that Jesus says in, in, the, in the sixth verse. He says, and the Lord says, listen to what the unjust says. And will, and will not God bring justice for him, for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? All oh, faithfulness people, you'll cry out to God day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice quickly. However, the problem is, here's what God, this is what Jesus says. He drops the bomb on us. He says, God will come speedily to those who are crying out to him day and night. But here's what Jesus says. However, the son of man comes, will he find faith like that on the earth? That, that's the question. It's not, it's not the question is, where is God? The question is, brothers and sisters, where is our faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the epitome of faithfulness. Uh, you never sleep or slumber. You are always here. Praise you, God, for your faithfulness, for you uh, showing us what reliability and consistency is all about. And so, God, I sense a, a move of your spirit to call us, your children, to faithfulness. And, uh, and if our lives are indicative of lack and uh, slowfulness and, uh, and uh, mediocrity and, and um, minimization, if, if we seem to be scattered and, um, and uh, wanting all the time, God, could it be, could it be that you have not left us? but that we have left you, that, that our mind, that our thoughts, that our speech, that our actions are so watered down uh, that, that we are so removed from our complete and consistent worship of you that it seems as if you are far away. But God, you are searching for us. You're searching for faithfulness in us. And so, God, I'm praying today that we would recognize that if I have moved off of my place of faithfulness, if I if I if I've become distracted um, in the in the in the desires of this world, if if uh, my love, if my love, my attention has been moved to the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, God, I pray in Jesus name that you would kick something up in us, that you would prick something in our hearts, oh God, that you would draw our hearts back to making sure that at the end of the day, that the one who is pleased the most is you. Help us, God, to be more faithful in our consistent consistency in worshiping and working for you. Be with us and guide us and keep us is my prayer. Make your face uh, to illuminate on the faithful so that we can see and respect and revere once again those who are faithful among us. Do that for us, God, and we will be so careful, uh, so honored to give your name the praise and the glory and the honor. Be with us and guide us today as we walk out of our house, not to go to a job, um, not to go to school, but to be an example of your faithfulness on the earth. God, 
Help us mix our mind that you have placed us in our schools and you placed us in our uh, businesses and placed us in our homes to be light and salt, not to just get an income. God, you are faithful. So God, help us to have our mind being faithful to pleasing you. And for that, we give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. 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 God, my brothers and sisters, keep that in your spirit today. I believe that God is calling for us, you and I, 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 to be faithful. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Bless you, God. Have a wonderful day.